The United States is going through a housing affordability crisis. Several housing groups, the Mortgage Bankers Association and the National Association of Realtors, sending a letter to Fed Chair Jay Powell urging the central bank to stop raising interest rates to try and get a little relief on that front. Joining us right now to talk about housing and the concerns about volatility in the sector is Cheryl Palmer. She is the CEO of the nation's fifth largest builder, Taylor Morrison. And Cheryl, welcome. Thank um, you. I think anybody who is either looking for housing or knows somebody who's looking for housing realizes what a big problem this is. There's not a lot of inventory, um, nothing out there on the market. The homes that are out there are, are getting bid up, and then you have to pay a higher mortgage rate, too. No, you're right, Becky. There's not a lot of inventory today. Um, and then you have to look at the inventory that's on the market. If you look at right. the resale market, the average inventory is something like 40 years old. So it's, it, it, when that's the average. That's the average. Yeah, so that's, that's why it. consumers are choosing new mm -hmm. for a number of reasons. One, I think when you look at the way those houses are built, the age of that inventory, their ability to customize, customize at least the design features. And then builders are able to help consumers, as you just mentioned, on overcoming some of these affordability concerns and helping them with you know, finance as a sales tool to okay. help them get into a mortgage. How do you do that? You know, we've always done that. We've always helped with closing costs, you know, potentially discount points. But today what you're really seeing is assistance on some forward commitments to bring, to help consumers get below market rates and have the confidence that they know what their mortgage monthly mortgage payment is. So when I look at our programs today, we have just the normal, where we're helping them with either closing costs. It's really about personalizing the experience to the individual consumer, because they all have slightly different needs, right? So it might be assistance on closing costs, maybe discount points for, to help them buy down their loan. It might be forward commitments, which we generally use on inventory homes that might complete within the next 45 to 60 days. And our newest program that's been tremendous is this um, buy, build, secure, which allows them to lock in a rate today for up to 12 months, a below market rate today, so they can pick the lot, build the house, and have the confidence on what their payment will be. And if rates drop, um, we can give them a float down, a free float down. I would assume that you don't have to give away as many of those incentives as you might have in the past, just because it definitely seems like a seller's market these days. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a tale of multiple consumers. So when I look at the impact of that most affordable, that FHA consumer over the last two years, it's a very deep pull. The first time buyers, I think about our buyers, about 50% are millennials. But if you look over the last two years, their monthly payment has almost doubled. Yeah. That's a big, that's huge. that's huge, right? I mean, our incomes, we haven't seen that. But between, you know, higher LTVs, Mm -hmm. And then there's been so much demand, prices have moved further. And then you look at rates moving into the you know, mid to high sevens. It's had a disproportionate impact where other consumers that move up, that resort lifestyle, active adult, 55 plus, however you want to you know, call them, they have more levers to pull. They might have equity they're pulling out of their home. So first-time home buyers are the ones who are really getting squeezed because when you don't have a home to right. sell into a strong market, disproportionately, you're, you're kind of and the and the underserved market, right? We're seeing a real... How nervous are you? Or do you think there's a moment that's going to come, it, probably not now, but a year or two from now, folks who have five-year, seven-year arm, 10-year something, that all of a sudden are going to look at the payments and say, I can't do it, and that there's actually going to be a spiral? You know, a big difference to what you might remember from yep, 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, where folks today, first of all, arms have not been priced that well. So I would tell you over the last few years, we really haven't seen many arms as a percentage of overall financing. Two, if you are, and I think we're actually going to start seeing them more now than we have over the last maybe 12, 24 months, but people are being, consumers are being qualified on the final rate. So actually, that's not something I'm tremendously nervous about. What do you mean by that? So if you're, let's say you're doing a three, two, one buy down. You're actually being qualified. If it's a three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, you're being qualified on the five and a half. So when we get there, you'll be fine. And by the way, if in fact rates move, when you say we get there, just just for those who who are not following all of this, when you when you're saying when we get there, meaning if the rate increases at that at that pace. Yeah. So if you have your first year at three and a half percent, right, and your second year is at four and a right. half, 
and then five and a half percent becomes your third through 30 right. years. Um, you're being qualified on today's income at that five and a half percent interest rate. So I'm not worried that in three years we're going to have some defaults. We are seeing a few more defaults on that first time buyer in general when you look across the population. But once again, since folks are being qualified on the higher rate, mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not very nervous about that. Cheryl, what what have you been doing? Because I'm thinking back to the financial crisis when a lot of the home builders just stopped buying land, got rid of some of that land, tried to get out of the building issues. Um, are you able to get loans just looking at the financial system and some of the troubles that have happened there? Are you able to get loans to buy as many lots to do as much building as you'd like to? Yeah, we are active, very active in the market. You know, once again, I think what really carries the day, what people need to take away, Becky, is we are we are short supply in this country, and we can talk about for sale or for rent, but we just don't have enough rooftops. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the numbers are pretty wide range, but if I, if I believe the lower end of the range, two and a half, three million, you know, deficient today, and we're continuing every year because of the labor environment to build on that deficiency, we need to keep building. I think we're going to continue to see the resale market locked up because of what, you know, where rates are and that, you know, 75% of consumers are sitting on a rate of less than 5%. So, so they're not going anywhere they're because going we're, they're anywhere. not giving up that rate. Most of them. I mean, there are reasons, life changes, people need to move. Probably about half of our buyers have an existing home today. Mm -hmm. um, but. We need shelter in this country. So it's really a very good time because builders are helping consumers get qualified. I mean, there are places you can't build, like here in the Northeast, though, where there's not a whole lot of space that's left. Yeah, there's not much inventory on the, for, you know, the resale or the new in certain parts of the country. But we're actually seeing great movement because of some of the affordability to smaller markets across the country. We generally build in the Smile States, Taylor Morrison. Um, we're not here in the Northeast, but I think you're right. I think land supply here is very, very tight.